first, let's talk about Wool by Hugh Howey. This has gotten a lot of buzz, especially since it was an early success for Amazon self-publishing. I'd gotten this copy in a gift exchange at Book Club, and I was mildly interested in reading it. I can't say too much about this book without getting spoilery, but it's a post-apocalyptic society that's entirely contained within a silo. And this is a really amazing book. I loved the first part, got a wee bit depressed during the rebellion, and now I'm excited to read more. Such a unique, thought-provoking world by Hugh Howey. It's very, very interesting. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, the first book in the Farseer trilogy. I have been aware of this book in the world of epic fantasy for a while, and it seemed like one of those you needed to read to get a good education in the genre. It's about the bastard son of a prince who is trained as, surprise, an assassin. This book follows him from childhood. I found his younger years a little bit slow, but they do pay off in the end. I really liked the back quarter of this book. I will continue reading on and hope the pacing of the last quarter holds up throughout the rest of the series. Off to be the Wizard by Scott Meyer, which has been on my TBR for quite a while, and a couple Christmases ago my sister bought it for me, seeing that it was on my TBR list, but I had not read it to this point, and I just kept putting it off. So I finally conned my book club into reading this with me. So this guy, Martin, discovers a computer program which allows him to manipulate reality, which soon gets him in trouble in modern times. So he uses it to flee back to medieval times, figuring he can set himself up as a wizard and rule over the yokels. When he gets there, he discovers he's not the first person to have that idea. So yeah, think programmer wizards? This was a pretty good concept, which was executed to a mildly entertaining level. Probably won't read anything else by him, but not regretting that I read this one. Foundation by Isaac Asimov. This is one of those foundational, pun intended, one of those foundational works of science fiction that you must read because it was so influential. I really didn't go in with high expectations, but this book was unexpectedly delightful with one caveat, which we will get to later. First off, this is an epic story about a dying empire and a man who, using psychohistory, executes a plan that spans many, many generations to preserve the knowledge of humankind through the inevitable dark ages to come. First, the good. I'm a sucker for epic stories of future foreknowledge, either through magic or, in this case, science, which cleverly guide the unfolding storyline. And Isaac Asimov's writing style certainly doesn't hurt here either, he's good. And now the not so good. That caveat I was talking about. How is there only one female character with speaking lines in this entire book? And she's portrayed as a shrew who can be easily shut up by giving her a feminine baubles. This is in a book that Isaac Asimov dedicated to his mother. His mother, come on! A Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This was a book club book for me. This is sci-fi which takes on the idea of parallel universes and the journey of one man named Jason to get back to his universe after another version of Jason throws him out into the multiverse and steals his life. I don't know, not bad, but I gotta say pretty sure I'm going to forget this book in about two months. It, it just doesn't go deep enough. I'm not one who has to say a sci-fi book needs to be like a science tome, but at least convince me that the veneer of the science sounds plausible. Plus, every time he enters a new world, he almost immediately seems to figure out where exactly that world's version of his wife is and everything about her. I know we're in the world of Facebook and all, but you don't have a computer, dude. What do you do? Find the nearest library in each world, hope your ID is valid in that world, and cyberstalk your wife in 15 minute increments? Anyway, it was the small things for this book? Uh, let's just say it was no Harry August. So my husband's stepdad loaned me these books from his personal library years ago, and I'd just been putting them off. So I finally read book one in the Laundry Files, The Atrocity Archives. The premise of this series is kind of fun. This organization called The Laundry is like the CIA or MI6, but they deal with the supernatural. And there's a lot of bureaucracy and paperwork they have to go through, all while fighting monsters from other dimensions. Bob, our hero, technically works in IT, and this book is about how he gets into field work. I can appreciate the premise of this book, but can't say I enjoyed the execution of it all that much. The story felt a lot like, I don't know, and then this happened, and then 
this happen? More than it felt like a cohesive driving story that knit together nicely. And also he tries with the female characters, but only really succeeds with one quirky side character who shows up late in the book. But otherwise, the love interest female is kind of flat, and the women he works with are all pretty much shrews. I just didn't find a lot to relate to in this book, but I can see why someone might like it. Remnant Population by Elizabeth Moon Science Fiction Ophelia has lived on Colony 2345.12 for over 40 years. Now she's old, and Sims Bancorp Company has decreed that Colony 3245.12 must be shut down and its residents shipped off to another planet. Ophelia's like, I'm too old for this shit, and I am sick and tired of people anyway, so I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna hide out and stay here, which is what she does. And she loves it, until one day a reconnaissance ship comes to the planet and is mysteriously slaughtered. She realizes she's not alone as she thought she was. This book reminds me a lot of The Martian, alone on an alien planet. The first half is extremely slow paced, only to pick up about halfway through with finally the introduction of more characters. Just change out the Matt Damon character for a little old lady who hates wearing clothes and that's Remnant Population. Okay, that's an oversimplification, but in all seriousness, this was a unique read with a unique main character that popular fiction doesn't allow to play lead very often. I approve. I finally picked up my first Philip K. Dick book, A Scanner Darkly, which is a super trippy book, loosely about a junky drug dealer law enforcement agent all in one, and these funky suits that fuzz out agents so their cover isn't blown. The whole book is just like one big paranoid drug trip. I really dug the ending on this one, but I do have to agree with reviewer Spider Robinson who said, soon after the release of this book, sometimes fascinating, sometimes hilarious, but usually deadly boring. Stone of Tears, Sword of Truth number two by Terry Goodkind. I loved book one in this fantasy series. Oh, seriously, it was so good. So I was excited to pick up book two. First way too long into this book is spent with Richard and Colin making gooey eyes at each other. The veil to the underworld has been torn and evil creatures are escaping to create havoc in the world. At the same time, the Sisters of Light show up, telling him if he doesn't let them train him, he's gonna die. Galen, not wanting him to die, pretty much forces him to go because, well, she doesn't want him to die. And he goes, and for some reason he thinks it means she hates him, and never loved him, and he's very mopey about it. Yeah, so parts of this were just fine, but the romantic parts were so saccharine, I wanted to gouge my eyes out. And I'm a person who can only be described as a super mega romance reader. I loved book one, but this one I could barely get through. I just reread Katura and Lord Death by Martine Levitt. I loved this book the first time I read it. It's the retelling of a classic fairy tale. In fact, it's the same fairy tale that The Bear and the Nightingale is based on, but while The Bear and the Nightingale tells it much more like its historical fantasy, Katura and Lord Death much more maintains the stylings and the structure of a fairy tale. In it, Katura follows a deer into the forest and gets really lost. Death is near, literally, and he happens to be young and pretty handsome. If quite dour. Not really wanting to die, Couture bribes Lord Death with a story in return for 24 hours more of life. And once again, I'm lulled into condescension by the almost flat storytelling, and then by the end I'm like, holy crap, that was a lot deeper than the simplicity of the writing would have indicated. I still loved this book. Uh, not the best book ever, but it makes me cry every time, and I'm still spinning over in my head what I think it means on this reread five and a half years after the first read. All right, those are the sci-fi and fantasy books I have been reading. Which of these have you read? Do you agree slash disagree with my reviews? And what other fantasy and sci-fi books should I be reading? <laughs>